All right, everybody. The uh, <clears throat> uncontrolled addiction continues. I'm going to be coughing a bit here. I am fighting something. Um, you got me on strong antibiotics and uh, steroids, but start off with a really bad sore throat, congestion, runny nose. Everything came back negative. It says it's not COVID. It says it's not influenza A or B or RSV, but they're like, you got some kind of funk going on, so got on some meds. <clears throat> But now it's moving down into my lungs, so I'm going to go get another COVID test today just to make sure. But anyway, the madness continues. I can't stop buying watches. But I got a really good deal on this one. So watch check. What are we wearing today? We've got uh, the Victorinox, which kind of goes in with these because even though it's not a Swiss Army, it's not associated with Swiss Army. They can't use that word, Swiss Army. It is a very Swiss Army styled uh, watch. So um, that's what we're wearing today. We got a Luminox Pacific Diver with the red band in the chronograph. So I've got two of these on the table. We've got the Field Force 43 mil, just a plain three die, uh, three hand with, uh, of course, it's under the minute hand right now, but we've got the day and date. Um, I've got on a leather strap. I sometimes alternate between that and the NATO strap that I have in Royal Blue. <clears throat> I really love their metal band, the bracelet, but it doesn't have micro adjusts. So it's either too tight or too loose. I can't get it to fit right. And it may fit one day and then I eat sushi and have a bunch of soy sauce and the next day all of a sudden it's pinching my wrist and I got to add another link and I'm just not going to keep adding, you know, removing links and stuff um, to, to do that. So we got on a leather band for when I feel like leather and then uh, the NATO strap I think actually sometimes looks better. But And then we've got the other Swiss Army brand. I've reviewed this one as well. This is the Wenger... I don't remember the model number. It's a cool little watch at like less than half the price. You can get these for $200. It's not a bad watch. It's actually a pretty good watch. So like that one a lot. <clears throat> so went over to Demo Jewelers up in Gainesville. And I've been going to Trip and Company, but they don't carry uh, Victorinox. And I wanted to look at the Inox because I had ordered one, got a screaming deal on it on Amazon, and it was said it was shipped, and then all of a sudden Amazon's refunding me my money, and the company that sold it, that said it had shipped, it never shipped, and now they're removed. I think it was a scam. Somehow it slipped through the cracks, got on Amazon. Luckily, Amazon took care of me and said, here's your money back, um, <clears throat> and canceled the order for me and all that stuff. I didn't have, even have to do anything. Um, so I wanted to go in and look. I said, well, maybe it was meant to me. Maybe, uh, maybe it was meant to be. I didn't... Uh, actually look at one beforehand. I just, I kind of liked it and it was like $355. So I was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So I went in and looked at them yesterday at Demo and um, they weren't, I liked it a lot, but then I saw this and I was like, that's the one. And these retail for MSRP is like 600. I got it for 392 at Demo. So what is it? It is the Journey 1884. So the Inox has been around for a while, Enox, whatever. This one is one of their newer models. Nice packaging. Got my receipt stuffed in there. You can get them in different colors, different bracelets. They have, I think, quartz and automatic versions. Um, so this is the least expensive one they make. Like I said, it's $600 MSRP. And if you were to buy it right from them on their website, it would cost you $600. <clears throat> so what do you get? Well, for this one, the less expensive one, least expensive one, you get a rubber strap but it's a really nice strap. It is also quick disconnect. So the thing to keep in mind with these is they are 21 mil. So it will option, it will limit your options a little bit. But um, nice case back. It is screw down. It, this one is a screw down crown, unlike this. This is why this has 100 water, a meter water resistance. This is screw down crown and therefore offers 200. This is 200 as well. 43 millimeter. Um... It is 12 millimeters thick, so not that thick. Um, weighs 120 grams. The lug width, as we mentioned, 21, diameter 43. It is quartz, and it has 200 meter water resistance. It does have loom. We'll do a loom check in a moment. It has a unidirectional crown with a very nice, it's got good grip, it's got very nice click, and I believe it's 120 clicks. Very, very nice. I like that the dial is very quickly, easily legible, but in a way it reminds me a little bit of the lives. Now the lives take it to a whole nother artistic level, 
but you could if you, you see there's like the inner circle is it like a lower level it, it has a little bit of that sandwich 3d effect when you're looking at it from certain angles and here it looks very dark when you do hit it in the light or the sunlight it does really kind of pop but you can see that kind of layered you got your logo at the top date is at the uh, six o'clock position Loom's good. The Loom tends to be really good on the Victorinox uh, watches. I'm not a Loom guy. I don't really care much, but <clears throat> for people that it matters to, great. Uh, these new straps are really nice. The Inox has a really, like, a heavier-duty one, and the Inox is claim to fame is that they put it through 130 torture tests. They run it over with a tank and a truck, and they have all kinds of stuff like that. Like, they put it in a washing machine for two hours, at 90 degrees, <laughs> and it passes all these insane tests. This isn't built to quite those standards. However, <clears throat> it is ISO certified shock resistant, and the 200 meter water resistance is also ISO certified. It also has anti-magnetic protection. So if you get it um, near heavy magnets and stuff, it should not affect the time, at least up to a point. I don't know what the Gauss rating is, but all in all, a really nice, good-looking utility watch that at the same time is uh, it's not fancy I, I think this makes a better dress watch um especially when if you if the bracelet does work for you it really is a nice beautiful looking watch and that's what i want to talk about here is on the victorinox you know I, I never go anywhere without one of these in my pocket lately it's been the handyman or if i'm riding the motorcycle and i need a bigger pair of pliers i'll have my swiss tools uh spirit x but the, the 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 it's almost like when you look at these watches and they're all in the I mean I paid three ninety but let's just say you know in the five hundred dollar ish range for the quartz versions of course the automatics are going to be up to eight hundred to twelve hundred the level of precision on these things is really kind of amazing when you hold this and you look at this it's like an eyelash stuck in there it's bothering me it's stuck between the bezel. Want to pull that out? Hey, I could use my tweezers on my Swiss Army knife. Cool. Um, it is just the machining. Everything about this thing just feels precision. There's something about it. Yes, there's certainly fancier watches. They are very utilitarian. But when you when you hold this and you feel it, this feels like a much more expensive watch. When you look at the all the edges, perfectly beveled and chamfered. When you look at, I don't know. There's just something about them that screams. Swiss precision. I think you get a lot of watch for the money with this brand. And I never, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's their marketing just sucks. Everybody knows Victorinox is the world's largest knife producer. They make and sell more knives in the world than any other brand by far. Like, I mean, by a country mile. The, it's a really good company. They, they're, I wouldn't say they're the most innovative because they haven't done a whole lot in a, in a long time. Uh, they're, 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 they've been kind of making the same stuff for years, but they just they 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 focus on something and they make a really good, well engineered product. They take pride in their craftsmanship and they just do a really good job. And they do the same on their watches. In fact, I would say the watches are a step up because these are relatively affordable. I mean, it's like an eighty dollar knife, but you start getting into five hundred to thousand dollar watches. They take that level of just. Proper swish Swiss precision, and they put it together, and it really is nice. You've got sapphire uh, crystal, shock resistant, two hundred meters. I mean, what more do you want? I really like these straps, and if you want to swap them out, boom, quick disconnects. Really, really nice. Do you want to throw a NATO strap or um, paratrooper strap, or you want to go buy the bracelets? Now, I will say to buy the bracelet separate. It's two hundred twenty dollars. Again, that's MSRP. Maybe you can find it online for a buck fifty or something like that. But it's four point two ounces, so it's it's a little heavy. It, there's a lot of good steel here, it, and I think it goes up to like seven ounces, seven point two or something. If you add the bracelet, that's a chunky monkey. So I opted for this, save some money because out the door with taxes, it was like four twenty two. That is a hell of a lot of watch for four twenty two. So. Nice quartz movement. All I'm going to have to do is change the battery every few years. Not a problem. Easy to do. Just screw off the back. 
You got your little tool here that you can adjust to hold the watch. I've got the, uh, the tool with the adjustable prongs that you can set for these uh, things here. Put a piece of uh, plastic, saran wrap, something like that over it so you don't scratch it and unscrew it. That's it. Get right into the back, swap out the battery. Not a big deal. But I think that is a beautiful watch. See it on the wrist. So this, I think, is a 44, maybe? This might be just a step bigger. Well, maybe it's a 43. It's hard to tell. I mean, it's a millimeter. <clears throat> I'm not always good measuring things by eye. I mean, I've convinced my wife that this much is 8 inches, you know? So there we go. Looks good. I like the navy blue, royal blue, whatever you want to call it. It's a nice deep rich blue but it's um you know when you get the light on it and stuff like that it really does uh kind of pop on that dial band is super comfy if i can get the goddamn thing on why is that not going in giggity yeah spin on it right so there you go beautiful watch the loom fades pretty quick i'll say that i mean i only hit it for a second with the flashlight but it is bright while it's lit. I don't really care about loom. Whatever. I don't wear my watch at night. Unless I was going somewhere where I was going to be out. I don't know. Maybe uh, Officer Mike invites me down to hunt hogs at night or something. In which case, I'm just going to wear a G-Shock. So I don't have to worry about breaking it. But that's a really nice watch. I like that a lot. I'm not sure if I'll keep the rubber strap or go to a NATO or something else. I'm not sure. I mean, it does look really nice. I just love they got the 1894 on a polished edge right there. Just nice little touches. It's just the right size for me. The 43 is my sweet spot. I'll go down to a 42. I'll go up to a 44, maybe a 45 if I really like the watch. But I feel like it's it's a really good watch for the money. So definitely a step up from the Wenger, although the Wenger is a great watch. It actually fits really nice. The bezel clicks really nice. It's, it's a good-looking watch. But there's just a level of refinement and quality that you feel here. This is a good watch. These are excellent watches. You're going to pay for it, but you're still, it's not an expensive watch. You know, you're not buying an Omega or something like that where you're spending thousands. So there you have it. That is my new Victorinox. I'm going to wear that today. Um, the strap does feel very similar. It's not that super soft silicone. It's more like real rubber. Um, so it feels like it's a little bit tougher, but it's not that hard almost plasticky like you get on a lot of the G-Shocks. It, it's kind of right in the middle. So it's rubber, but it's and it's a little firm, but it's still, I would say it's still somewhat supple. Um, the silicone can get too soft and squishy, allows it to move around. It lets things stick almost to it and it snags it. So this is nice. That's really nice, actually. feels very similar to the Luminox. It's a little bit of a harder, but it's rubber, not plastic. So... Anyway, there it is. The madness continues. I keep saying I'm going to stop buying watches, and then I see a good deal on something, and I'm like, I got to have it. So we're going to rock that one, wear it today, see how I like it, see how comfortable it is. But that's a good watch if you want to jump in the pool, do stuff. I mean, to have it ISO certified to 200 and have it shockproof and um, magnetic resistant, um, I think that's pretty cool. You get your screw down crown, keep the water out. And you can use it as a dive watch, although technically it's not a dive style. Um, they talk about it as like a mountaineering. I don't know. To me, it, you don't have all the numbers on here the way you typically see a dive style bezel, but it kind of is the same. But it's just different enough that I was like, you know what? I don't have one quite like it, so I'm going to pick that up. So Anyway, I'm rambling, but that is the new Victorinox. Um, go give their watches a look. If you've got a, you know, if you're here in this area, um, go up to Demo. They're the only place I know locally that has a decent selection of Victorinox in stock. Um, it's D I M O. They're up in Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, but if you've got a Victorinox place near you that has their watches, go look at them and handle them. I think you'll be impressed. I know a lot of people just think, oh, it's the Swiss Army knives, and oh yeah, they make luggage and some other things. These are legit watches. I mean, if you want to spend twelve, thirteen hundred dollars on one of their automatic pro dive models, you can spend that much. I mean, they're not cheap watches at all by any means. They're not going to, you know, rival Rolex or a Tudor anytime soon as far as price goes. But um, they're definitely nice watches. They're very nice watches. So I would give them a look and see if you find one that fits the bill. They got Inox. They've got field watches. They've got chronographs. They've got a couple pilot styles. Um, they've actually got a pretty decent range to, to pick from, and they're just very well executed. 
as you would expect from a proper Swiss, manufa Swiss manufacturer that's been around for over a century. So anyway, there you have it. We'll talk to you guys later.